Hello, my name is Marcus Chavez and I'm with IFARA TV. Today we will be cable casting segments of the press conferences that were held during the 22nd CROI, which is the annual conference on retroviruses and opportunistic infections, which took place in Seattle, Washington this year. This segment will be presented by Gilles Van Katzim, who is with Médecins Sans Frontières, also known as Doctors Without Borders in the U.S. This is based in Geneva in Switzerland. Gilles talks about the MSF response as well as the international response to the overall ongoing Ebola epidemic in West Africa. Uh, thank you very much, Scott. Uh, so I won't be presenting a study. I'll be presenting the, the MSF response to the overall West Africa Ebola epidemic in the context of a description of the epidemic and in the context of the international response, which in summary is too little, too late. Uh, with more than 23,000 confirmed uh, Ebola cases and more than 9,000 deaths, among which 500 healthcare workers today, a long-lasting disastrous effect on the health system and the economy, leading to the loss of many more vulnerable lives, the Ebola epidemic in West Africa will leave an ugly scar that will persist for decades. It will remind us of the negligence of the international community to act timely. This disaster could have been prevented. It was not overseen, it was ignored. Since March 2014, MSF sent to Guinea, Sierra Leone, Liberia, Mali, Nigeria, Senegal, DRC teams, more than 1,400 tons of supply. Over 8,000 patients were admitted in one of the 22 Ebola management centers that MSF built over the course of the epidemic of which five, more than 5,000 were confirmed and 2,300 survived. The, the organization currently operates eight Ebola man management centers with 650 bed capacity, is active in all the six pillars that constitute a proper uh, Ebola outbreak response, namely community sensitization, case investigation and contact tracing, safe referral, safe burial, isolation and care, infection and prevention control, and support to non-Ebola health facilities. Uh, we distributed several million anti-malarial treatments and more than 5,000 home and uh, disinfection and protection kits. Since March 2014, MSF repeatedly called for help. In March, we alerted the world that this epidemic was different reaching for the first time, different to, from previous outbreaks, which were mostly rural and confined to, to small villages. For the first time reaching a large city, Conakry, and needed urgent international support. In June, we highlighted that the epidemic was out of control with more than, more than 60 concurrent outbreaks across Guinea, Sierra Leone, and Liberia, including in all three capitals, and that the response capacity was completely inadequate, reaching far beyond the limits of MSF. In July, we called for state intervention as the outbreak clearly outstripped NGO capacity. In August, finally, WHO acknowledged that Ebola was a public health emergency and we started having the first um, tiny steps of a response in September, we called for civil and military biohazard capacity to be deployed. And from October onwards, after so additional resources had started to flow in, we called for better coordination and flexibility of the response in order to, be, to adapt to permanently changing epidemic. The result is that we had an outbreak in five waves Speaking in April, May, and December in Guinea, in September, October in Liberia, and in December in Sierra Leone. Except for the first one, each of these peaks could have been prevented by implementing a full outbreak response in time and with sufficient resources. This outbreak is not over, and it remains unpredictable. This ongoing widespread transmission and geographical spread, both in Guinea and Sierra Leone, whilst in Liberia, the number of cases has gone down dramatically. Spread to bordering countries, especially Ivory Coast, is still a risk with new cases in um, uh, prefecture from Guinea, uh, 
uh, adjacent, yeah, Lola adjacent to Ivory Coast. New cases increased again after a drop in January, 144 new cases in the week up to 8 February, 65 in Guinea, 76 in Sierra Leone, three in Liberia. Even with just one case, we can have a new outbreak. Any complacency would now jeopardize the progress made. So what still needs to happen? Actors need to focus efforts on addressing serious weaknesses that remain. First of all, contact tracing and surveillance. Uh, last week, the uh, WHO reported that in Guinea, only 17% of new cases were on a contact list. In Liberia, there was 33%. In Sierra Leone, uh, the data is not available. Without massively scaling up surveillance and contact tracing, we will not uh, com finish this epidemic. Regional coordination of the surveillance is of utmost importance as these borders are porous and we need to have to prevent a reintroduction of Ebola in currently Ebola free zones. Access to healthcare for non Ebola patients is insufficient and unsafe. Already weak public health systems have been seriously damaged by the epidemic. In Liberia and in Sierra Leone, many hospitals shut their doors with very few places for non-Ebola sick people to turn for help. Some of these health services are reopening. Some actors are supporting infection prevention and control, but mostly in primary health care with very little uh, support to secondary and tertiary hospitals. Stigma and hostility towards healthcare workers and survivors is still a big problem as is general information of the population. In Guinea, attacks on healthcare workers are increasing, causing, caused by stigma and fear, but are preventing teams to access suspect cases and to conduct proper community mobilization. As happened in Farana uh, last week, MSF teams were uh, attacked, our car was burned, several staff were wounded, um, because people thought um, we were going to spray Ebola in the schools. So community sensitization and health promotion need to be reinforced. MSF opposes forced quarantine, as is still happening in um, Sierra Leone and in parts of uh, Guinea. And then lastly, we need decentralized, full, resp full rapid response capaci capacity. As new cases continue to appear in new places, the only way to stem the outbreak is to establish this full response on site as soon as possible. This epidemic has been extremely challenging for MSF. We reached the limits of our, of our human resource and our supply capacity. In, heavily pressured by the need for experienced staff, by contamination of our own staff. We lost 14 staff of 28 uh, MSF staff who was infected with Ebola, by the difficulty to solve uh, medical evacuation capacity. The focus on isolation and care at the beginning didn't allow initially to fully, fully cover the response everywhere with gaps in health promotion, contact tracing, safe burials and infection prevention and control. The constant need to adapt to ever-changing epidemic required a very high level of flexibility, further straining our human resource capacity, and then many challenges lie ahead in terms of reconstruction of the health system, economic, um, impact of Ebola uh, and emergency preparedness. This epidemic, this epidemic has taught us that there is no functioning global response mechanism to a pot potential pandemic in countries with fragile health systems. A clear gap still remains between the commitments made and the direct, direct action that is desperately needed. Thousands have died because of international negligence, including many healthcare workers of West Africa desperately trying to contain the outbreak with the limited means they had. These are the real heroes of this epidemic. <laughs>